So this video is going to be a little bit different. My name's Hannes, this is Painting by Letters, and let's talk about something that I've wanted to do for quite a number of years. So the third project on this channel, which exists to help me get ready for 10th edition of 40k, is to build a gaming board. My last few games of 40k, rare though they are, have mostly been us using things like books or Lego plants or something as terrain, and to be honest with you I would like to change that. When I was a teenager, I always wanted a Citadel Realm of Battle board. I don't know how widely known these were within the community at the time really. It was just something that Games Workshop always seemed to sell. They were very expensive. You got six two foot by two foot panels and a bunch of clips to stick them together. What made this board interesting was that these panels could be stuck together in almost any orientation, which meant that you could change where the hills were and things like that. And, and all of my really keen memories of reading White Dwarf, particularly the ones surrounding when the Space Wolf released, God, was that 5th edition? <laughs> were staring at this board and really wanting it. It used to come with like a little bag as well to kind of carry it. I have an obsession surrounding this board these days where I sit on eBay and attempt to work out if I could afford them. So fun fact, Leviathan's gonna go live in just shy of two hours when I'm recording this audio. And this is sort of really the keen point. I want to drop quite a lot of money today on this hobby. And so the kind of quantities of money that we see on eBay for these boards just isn't tenable. Those with some damage, they can go for about 150. And those that are feature complete with everything can go anywhere from 200 up to about 400 pounds. Doing a bit of an average game, at least when I was initially scripting this segment a couple of weeks ago, it was 220. The average, however, fluctuates, and you'll see that through this video. So I thought about setting myself a bit of a fun challenge. Can I make my own gaming board, but for less money than that? So my problems, I suppose. I have no DIY skills to speak of. I have nearly no DIY tools. So when I say I've got nearly no DIY tools, I want to be really honest with what I've got because this will obviously affect the challenge quite considerably. So first and foremost, I do have a hammer. I've used it to put up paintings, things like that. Nothing too difficult there. Don't actually happen to have any nails at the moment though. So if I do need to do that, I will have to think about that. The next thing that's of note is I do have some drills. I have never used it before about three minutes ago when I plugged it in to check it works. And fecking hell is it loud and seemingly quite powerful. So I've got that and that really is it. I mean, obviously I've got stuff I need for hobbying like super glue or little hobby knives, things like that, but I don't have anything else. <laughs> Do you ever start something and think, hmm, this could be a mistake? <laughs> I don't know how to do this. I mean, I've watched lots of YouTube videos on it, you know, from MS Paints or Geek Gaming Scenics or something like that, but I don't know how to do this. And this is kind of the pertinent point, I suppose. When I was 14 years old, I did build a gaming board. Well, I say I built it, my grandfather built it really. And it was a set of four foot by two foot panels that I put some insulation foam over the top and then carved out some rivers. I think my challenge is, can I make something equivalent to that Citadel gaming board for the same money or less? But anyway, we better start with research. You can kind of see what it's like. So you get this, you basically get a hill in each corner and then two vaguely flat panels. And then you can also see there's a couple of sort of craters here and a couple of sort of rock formations as well. Okay, so I have literally no idea how to do this. <laughs> so I figure the first thing to do is probably Google it. So how to build a war gaming table. Let's go with that. See what we get. Keep gaming scenics, of course. So 
you're watching them during this step, they've got some kind of, I guess, rock formations that they're gluing in place, but essentially they're gluing it in place using modeling compound. So they've painted the base of it brown. They've then washed over the rock formations and then used some kind of ochre color to stain around the rock formations as well. Obviously that's the way that I was doing my bases in some of the Necron videos where I was painting the bottom side and then building on top of that. So I presume they're gonna do something vaguely similar here. Here's a really interesting. So we can see that Luke is flocking using a um, sieve, just a metal sieve. One of the things that I'm a little bit worried about, given the, the, the challenge, I suppose, is keeping the price down. And I'm a little bit concerned that particularly those static grass applicators, I've looked at them before and they're usually quite a lot of money. Um, if we can use a sieve variant instead, that sounds pretty good to me. So Luke's moving into trees and other elements here. It's not really what interests me. Right, so I finished work about an hour ago and I've just done my sort of first initial bit of research. So I'm actually gonna nip straight off to the shops now, try and get that out of the way, because they'll still be open for about another, maybe two hours. So I'll try and do that and then I'll come back and sit with you later on today. This is the stupidest thing I've ever done. <sighs> yeah, so I've just got back from the DIY store. Uh, as predicted, a local smaller store, much easier to get really useful information out of them. So I talked to them a little bit about woods, things like that. They gave me some advice which is quite similar to the research advice, which is MDF or ply, and then some kind of cheap strip wood to keep everything in place. So that was really quite cool. While speaking to them as well, I've got to say this, they were just brilliant at talking me through what I would need as a complete novice. Quite a number of times as well, I went in and thought, you know, from my understanding, oh, I probably want like a saw, for example and they would say, okay, for what you're doing, you don't really need any of the technical stuff. How about you consider this sort of stuff? Cheaper ranges, stuff like that. And that was really, really helpful. So really, from chatting to them, the, what I'll need next is woods, paints, and then stuff to go on top. Seems like a win. Seems like I'm getting somewhere. Cool. So. I've gone and investigated this a little bit, and I'll be honest with you, it took a couple of hours to sort of nail down, particularly thinking about shops and things like that within range. And actually, it seems to be B&Q, seems to offer the best option. So it's 50 pence a cut. Now the B&Q plywood or MDF is eight foot by four foot. So I think if we get a nine mil thick board, for about 30 or so quid at eight foot by four foot and get them to cut it to two foot by two foot boards. So what I wanna do is I just wanna work out our prices here, budget here. So I'm gonna cut really quick formula. Well, 15 by 15, let's go with that. So, strip wood, 15 by 15. We've got a 527 price there. We'll need six of these, but no delivery cost. So 
So I think like pretty much everyone else, I've got shit tons of polystyrene lying around. But what I would like is some kind of cover for the board first. Hear me out. I know that's a decent amount of money, but <laughs> that roughly equates to the whole size of the board. I'm gonna nip down to a craft store and see if I can get something slightly cheaper, because I probably will be able to. But worst case scenario, 18.99, we're gonna need one of them. And then this is where the rest is gonna come in. In a previous video, I talked a lot about Geek Gaming Scenics and I would like to keep using them. So roughly speaking, we'll start with the Scenic Sealant Spray. So what I've done here, really simple equation, is the previous number plus, and then if it's a yes, so if I would need to buy something again, it's the full price. If it's kind of, that's what KO means, so if I might kind of need it again, so at some point I'm going to need some wood glue again, at some point I'm going to need some adhesive, at some point I'm going to need some spray adhesive, and so on. Looking at the volumes of the stuff that I got, because I did buy bulk, I do suspect in a lot of these cases I'm not really going to need them, shall we say, every single time I do a board, but it might be every two or three times I might need something. So what I've said there, just to sort of keep it fair, is I'm going to half the value of everything that kind of, and then if I don't need it again, it'll just say, it'll just not add anything to the previous number. So we can see that by the, that metric, I'm only spending 140 quid on the board itself. Uh, it's not an exact formulation, but it's something a bit interesting to think about. If you happen to have quite a lot of DIY tools in the background, you've got that there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run, I'm gonna go and buy all of the equipment, and then we'll probably finish this video with just taking stock of all of the things I've bought <laughs> uh, before I start this completely mad project. Okay, yeah, I have to admit that this project ballooned slightly larger than I was intending. Um, I'm gonna be honest about that. Um, so the whole idea, obviously, was to build a replica of the Citadel Realm of Battle board for less money than they cost on eBay, and that was my little challenge to myself. Um, at this point I have bought all of the constituent items, but not all of them are here. This video is due to go out on Tuesday, and right now it is Sunday, so even though I've been waiting on some of these items for about two weeks now, they've still not turned up. Um, so I thought I would round this video off by talking through everything that we've got, most of which is in front of me, and how much it's cost. And then if anyone does want to follow along at home, or at least you want to sort of follow the challenge, you can see where I'm at, at least at the end of this sort of first buying stage. So the largest constituent item, I suppose, is the plywood. Um, I went to B&Q up the road a couple of days ago, uh, picked out a sheet, I couldn't get the thickness that I wanted, I had to get something slightly thicker, um, and they cut it for me in store. So I actually don't have six, I have eight 2x2 two two panels, and that has a constituent price of £35. Obviously two of those panels we won't be using, so I'll hang on to them for some other project. And the other thing as well is obviously the saw will have some thickness. So one of the things that I'll have to make sure I do before I build anything is that they tessellate properly because they won't be exactly the right size, but the, the cut across and the cuts down should line up. So as long as I work out where they were originally, it should still work and make sense. There's no worries there. The two items I've got on order is some strip wood, so that was 31.62 in the end for some strip wood, um, and that's on order. And the other thing on order is some insulation foam. I know when I was talking earlier on this project, I was thinking about these 
A3 foam panels that you can get from um, Amazon. Had a bit of a look while I was going around B&Q and they have massive 8 foot by 4 foot foam insulation boards. So I'm basically just going to order one of them and that is £12.97 which is actually much cheaper than what that Amazon alternative was going to be. It was going to be nearly 40 quid. So 12 97 seems like a bit of a win. Got a saw, that cost me a tenner. Got a mitre here, that cost me two quid. I've got some adhesives, so the spray cost me six. The PVA cost me 10. Uh, the no more nails there cost me 13 in total because I had to buy the handle as well. And the wood glue there cost me 10. The only really major constituent purchase is this Geek Gaming Scenic stuff. We've got some modeling compound, I've got some barks, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six little bags, some of which is base ready, some of which is flocks. Um, plus, I've also got some of the glues as well. Uh, this one I already had, but I got this one, which is the Matt Scenic sealant. Uh, together, all of the Geek Gaming stuff, minus this obviously, because I already had it, came to £55.40. The most expensive item being the model and compound, which I think was about £9.40 something. So in total, all of the items that I require to do this challenge has come to a depressingly large £180.99. That's obviously much more than I initially thought it would cost me. Having said that though, it is still lesser than the boards would be on eBay. And there's gonna be quite a lot here that we'll end up with afterwards. So one of the things that I've been thinking about is sort of roughly speaking, how much is the cost per board? Obviously if the plywood's 35 pounds, but I'm only using six out of the eight panels, how much do those six cost versus the eight, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna think about that as well, and any offcuts and other things, I'm sure we can use them in other projects. Fair warning, um, building boards doesn't seem to be cheap. Uh, this is Leviathan month. Um, I know I mentioned that earlier, I did get a copy, so woo, it's not arrived yet, but woo, this really isn't as cheap as I thought. The one outstanding purchase that I don't have is brown paint. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing during this project is I'm going to be making my own Mod Podge. So if you didn't know, Mod Podge is basically PVA, water and a paint if you want to colour it. And that's how I'm going to coat all the foam to seal it. Um, so I do need some paint and that probably is going to be about 20 quid. So realistically speaking, how much does it cost starting from pretty much nothing to get to the point where you have everything that you need to make a board? It's about the same amount of money as it costs to buy them off eBay. Thank you for watching, my name's Ben Hannes, this is Painting by Letters, and keep safe out there.